Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Beatrice. Today's sequence is a yin yoga sequence to target the upper body. It's not often we practice um, positions that target the upper body in yin yoga. Often it's uh, targeted to the lower body, especially the hips. But I find it to be an amazing practice to release tension in the upper body. So it's quite a simple sequence. You don't really need any props apart from maybe a block, which is not needed, but it's always useful to relax the, the neck and the shoulders and the head a little bit more. So if you want to use a block and you have one, by all means, get, get it. Um, if you want something and you don't have a block, you can use a, a book, like a thick, thick book, uh, such as a dictionary um, or a few books stacked one over the other. So whenever you're ready, roll your mat out and come practice with me. So we will start today's sequence from seated. As always, if you need to elevate the hips, you know you can use a pillow maybe, or just that block, bring it under the sitting bones, tuck the pelvis slightly, so you can lengthen the back, the whole spine up to seated. Bring the hands down to your knees, palms down to begin with. You don't have to sit cross-legged. You can sit in anywhere that, any way that's comfortable for you. And then gently tuck the chin slightly into the chest. Let the shoulders roll down on your back. And beginning by bringing some awareness to the body, especially the upper body and to the breath. So whenever you've found your comfortable position, you can close your eyes or soften the gaze in front of you. That's especially if closing your eyes makes you feel unsafe or uncomfortable. Just keep a nice soft gaze in front of you so you can still drop into your body and soften the muscles around the eyes. And begin to notice with awareness the top of your head. it down, that awareness to the face, to all the muscles in your face, trying to get some softness to arrive to all those muscles. any tension in the jaw maybe part your lips slightly and allow the muscles of the jaw to release bring that relaxation down through the neck into the shoulders and the arms all the way down to the fingertips Notice the upper back and mid back, maybe even the lower back, the whole upper body. As you do this, bring a little bit of attention to the breath. You can focus on the breath moving in and out of the nostrils. You can focus on the movement of your body with the breath. that helps you stay with this focused attention, with this concentration, awareness. And begin to allow the breath to come deeper into the abdomen. Trying to soften the chest and the shoulders as you breathe in. 
and melt it even farther down as you breathe out. And there is no need to guard your breath too much in yin, just keeping a nice soft breath throughout the practice. And if you feel at any point your breath becomes short and shallow, maybe come to a gentler version of the posture. You can keep your eyes closed or open your eyes now as we come into the first posture, which is just, such a, just a gentle neck stretch. So drop the right ear to the right shoulder, beginning by keeping the nose pointing forward and the ear directly to the shoulder. If this is enough, stay here. If you want a little bit more and you feel that this is not giving you any sensation, lengthen the left arm out and reach for the ground. And if it's still not enough, you can bring that right hand to the left side of your face. And rather than pressing the head down towards the shoulder, just bring a little bit more distance between the ear and the shoulder. Trying to keep the rest of the body nice and long. Try not to collapse to the right. As you exhale, begin to look down towards the ground, towards your right knee. And you can move the hand to the back of your head. As you exhale, release the hand if you're holding your head up or down. And as you exhale, bring the chin down into the chest slowly. Give your body time to release that left side of your neck. Notice how it feels. You can lift the head back to center just for a breath. And as you exhale, this time left here comes down to the left shoulder, beginning by pointing the nose forward and keeping the ear just in line with the shoulder. And then from here, the side, if this side feels any different, keep the rest of the body in line, try not to collapse to the left, and maybe lengthen the right arm out to the side. And if you want more, you can always assist that space between the shoulder and the ear with your left hand.
And on your exhale, this time begin to look down towards your left knee. And if you want to, you can release the head or bring the hand to the back of your head now. And in all these postures, make sure that you check on to all the areas of tension that you might have. Maybe it's the jaw, maybe it's the shoulders and neck. See if you can release those areas. Try not to build any tension up. Try to relax the muscles. Couple more breaths here. And exhale to release the hand down to the ground and gently bring the chin down to the chest. Do this all thing really slowly. And maybe take a couple of semicircles from side to side, ear to shoulder, ear to shoulder, just to release take this counter pose and trying to be slow and mindful with this movement as well in between postures we don't want to make it a young practice and then bring the head back in line with the spine and just notice how you're feeling in the neck and move up onto your hands and knees Take a moment to come into this position. Maybe take a couple of cat and cow just to move through the spine. Inhale, drop the belly and open the heart. And exhale to round. Inhale, extend the spine, drop the belly. Exhale to round. On your inhale, we turn to your neutral spine, so we're not extending, but also not rounding. Make sure you have space in front of you on the mat, maybe walk back. And begin by keeping the hips of the knees and just walking hands forward into melting heart posture. So we walk the hands forward. This is one of those postures where you might need the prop, that block to bring under the forehead. Otherwise, let the forehead come down to the ground. Now, if this is enough for you, stay here. You can lengthen the arms forward. You can bend the elbows and bend the elbows and maybe reach for the forearms. Or you can bring the palms together and bring the hands to the back of your head while you scoop the elbows forward slightly. So find your your position to stay here in stillness and softness as much as you can. And as you're here, notice the shoulders, the chest, maybe even the low back. Even check in with the jaw.
Just take two more deep breaths here. When you're ready, if you have the arms back, release the hands and begin to come back up to your hands and knees. Take your time to come out of this one. It's usually quite an intense one. So take your time to get out. And then from here, we're coming into the back of the shoulder. So you can decide to keep the hips tracked over the knees, or if you want to, you can sit back as if you were in child's pose. So sit back towards the heels. That's your choice. But starting onto hands and knees, keeping the left hand down to the ground and threading the right arm underneath the left, looking out to the left. So you can bring that block under the head if you need support for your neck. Or you can stay here. This is one option. Other option is to lengthen the left arm up while you keep the hips pointing up to the ceiling. And another option is to sit back towards the heels, which is the one I'm going to take. And take child's pose instead. And you can have the knees together or wide. Begin to bring that left hand down towards your head. Press up to your hands and knees or maybe just press onto that left hand to unroll up to your child's pose or sort of like a seated child pose. And then lengthen the right arm forward and thread the left arm underneath. Just moving to the other side. Same thing if you were still in extended um, puppy or melting heart posture. You can come up to hands and knees and thread the arm and stay there if you prefer to have the hips up to the ceiling. Make sure that your shoulders are relaxed, that your head and neck are relaxed.
begin to press onto your right hand and then roll back to center and from here make your way up to hands and knees and down onto your front so take your time to get there bring yourself to your front and this time we're doing the opposite we're opening onto the chest and the front of your shoulder so from here bring the right arm out to the side be beginning with the left the right hand straight if you feel that that's not enough you can then bend the elbow but trying to keep the hand all in line with the shoulder so that you can really feel that opening and then begin to tip your body to the right so you're moving onto your right side and you can just bend the knees and stay here so that you can soften the body as much as you can as you bring that openness to that right side and the head can come to the ground or on the block once again so just begin to feel how this side is feeling and if it's not enough you can start to bend the elbow while you keep it in line with the shoulder If you need even more, you can straighten that bottom knee, bottom leg, that's the right, and then bring that left over the top and the foot to the back of your right leg. But I feel like this is a bit much for me because I tend to engage the muscles a little bit too much. So I'd rather have a soft, softer practice when I am practicing for the upper body. And slowly start to come back to your front so you can help yourself with the left hand to raise slightly up off the ground and you can bring yourself onto your forearms so you're still on your front her feet are a little bit wider than a hip width distance or as wide as the mat so in between this side and the next one and the left side we're coming into sphinx so the you come up onto your forearms palms are facing down Elbows can be either underneath the shoulder or depending on how much you want to feel in the lower back. You can have the arms farther forward. So it's going to be a little bit gentler on the lower back. But here the target area is the shoulders and the chest. So trying to keep those open. And you can use the block here to bring it under the forehead. So you can really relax the neck and the head down. So we're really what we want to do is bring little bit of uh, softness rather than adding any tension so every, anything you can do to allow that softness to arrive to your body it's always very welcome Maybe you want to turn the palms to face up to the ceiling. I quite like that. It allows my shoulders to feel a little bit softer, a little bit more open. And checking in with your glutes as well. See if you can relax them.
begin to remove the block from under the forehead place it to one side and then gently come down to your front and take a moment to notice how you're feeling before we move to the other shoulder to the left shoulder so readjust anything you need to any clothes that come down readjust anything your mat and then when you're ready left arm opens out again if you have noticed that your right shoulder felt like you needed to bend that elbow to feel anything then maybe you might need it on the other side but it's not um, always the case often the sides are a lot different I know for me the left side is a little bit more open than the right so I'm already starting with the elbow bend but feel into the body first for yourself so come to lengthen the left arm out or bend the elbow and then start, start to tip your body to the left so you come onto the left side of your body and you can bend the knees again and come to your side and relax that right arm down and see how you're feeling here And begin to come out of this side as well. We are going to move to our back. So in any way that feels good for you to come out, I'm going to press onto the right hand, come up onto the hands and then roll straight onto my back. So as you come to your back, if you have that block, I'll suggest a different option. If you don't have the block, just coming down to Shavasana as it is. So coming down to the ground, I would come to constructive rest, so bend the knees and bring the feet flat to the ground. Feet are as wide as the mat, so the knees can rest against each other. If you have a block and you want to try to open the chest a little bit more, you can bring that block in between the shoulder blades at the first height. So placing the block right under the shoulder blades, you can take your time to place it in a way that works for you. And then coming down to the ground, and dropping the head down to the ground, opening the arms and the chest. Maybe you need it a little bit lower, maybe a little bit higher. Take your time to adjust it. Obviously, if you have two blocks, there are other ways to um, open the chest, maybe even wider. But with one block, this is the perfect place to place it and to open the heart. Trying to relax the head, the shoulders and the arms. And bringing that relaxation down into the length of your body.
relaxing your face, your head, the neck. Even if the tendency might be to bring the chin up to the chest and open the throat, see if you can keep a slight tuck in the chin. stay here for as long as you need to. You can keep that block in between the shoulder blades or just under the shoulder blades. Or maybe remove it and come down to Shavasana and straighten the knees off of constructive rest as well. And whenever you're ready to close the practice, you can roll onto your left side and bring yourself up onto a comfortable seated position. In a moment just to notice how your body feels just like we started bringing the attention up from the forehead and cascading it down into the face the neck the shoulders down into the length of your back and the arms whenever you're ready to close the practice bring the palms together a heart center and bow down. Thank you very much for practicing with me. I hope you enjoyed and I hope your upper back feels nice and loose now. Please join me again for another practice and if you enjoyed this one please like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you again.